Thank you guys for taking time from your lunch to come. I want to have a discussion on a topic that I'm very passionate about. One, because it matters not just to me, but it matters to our society. And two, because it affected, it affected me. I'm part of the story I'm going to tell. So today we're going to talk about the double bond, women of color in STEM. And we're going to talk about the social, the economic, and the ethical impact of those things. So if you have a question, the way I like to do it is just raise your hand and I'll take it as we go along. Um, I also wanted to mention that if you want to follow up, you can. I'm on LinkedIn, so hit me up. I want to set a definition as we like begin this talk. Double bond means first, being African American or a person of color, and second, being a woman. The unique things that persons who fit those categories face. And I will propose to you today that it is unique, and you'll see why. When I started looking at the data, the first thing I did just reflect back, like men and women, we are different. And it's not bad to be different. I'm not with, and I'm sorry if this is political, genderlessness. Women are women and men are men. And we have attributes that complement each other and that can provide value. So when I think of uh, feminine traits that uni women uniquely have, first, we have unique perspective. When women of color from our culture, from being a woman in the sciences, we bring a unique perspective. A woman would see this bottle and see something very different I propose in a man, because that's just the way we see things. And that's a good perspective. You need diversity of thought. We are team builders. Women have roles. They work in jobs on teams. They have families. They work in schools. They're constantly coordinating teams. Who has kids in here? Who has to organize a play date or get to school or help with a function at school. We're just very good at it. Not saying guys can't do it, but this is, to me, a trait I have observed that women are very good at. And where else would you need that except in a science and engineering environment where you need people to work together, they have to talk, they have to share. It's an excellent trait to have. This is spoken by a person of color. I emphasize with managers who don't consider racial disparity to be an issue worth resolving. Those who do not experience its effects firsthand will find it difficult to give it credence. But to put oneself in the mindset of a minority employee isn't much of a stretch. Just imagine, imagine for a moment being the only man in a bachelorette party. And we know what they say at bachelor, bachelorette parties. Or the only woman at a packed nightclub. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with it but it's an unnerving feeling for that person. After a while, you kind of withdraw to yourself and you kind of speak less. You need backup, you need people who look like you. Silicon Valley, RTP, New York, Austin, places of technology focus, why aren't there more people at these companies? This movie, and I'm sure you all saw Hidden Figures, it was pretty powerful. This happened in the 60s, and it was, it's really ironic because the accomplishment of the whole United States rested on women who could provide backup to these astronauts. And if you've seen the movie, then you know the circumstances with which they worked. And when you think about that, this is not like fictional. This is reality. This is what really happened. We were willing to risk our ability to be successful in the space program, what if all these women quit? Um, this, the character that she played, you know, she was the person who was able to set up the IBM mainframe. They had sent in specialists, and anybody who's ever worked for IBM, you know that there was, the mainframe is a very highly proprietary system. It takes a very special skill set, and even the person that they, the people that they sent, had a challenge. But what if she wasn't there? What if you erased them? Then what would be the output? So I say that people need to see people that look like them. They need to be comfortable and see people look like them who are in a position of leadership and that can provide opportunity. 
Successful people are engineers. These are, these are semi quotes, not exactly. Brain size and how you use it, that's what matters. Let's just face it, this is a white and Asian world. And the one that stuck out to me most was get a white guy to be your front. Berkeley and Stanford are really nearby. And, uh, and when, when, the, when my bio was announced, it you know, mentioned that I just finished a program at UT Austin in technology commercialization. I've always worked in technology and I could always do like patents and ideas like that, but I did that degree and pay is the only degree I paid for. I did that one. The other things were on scholarship. And that's my, I said to my husband, I'm, that's my new car because <laughs> I had to pay for that. But the one thing I wanted to learn was what is the process, the entrepreneurial process? And when the guy said in the film, um, we've been here a week, it's a nine week program. They hadn't pitched, they hadn't shown the demo. That's bad because the whole reason they were brought together was to be able to be more active in the space. So that really hit home. When, it, when I was uh, in the program, I just finished last May, we came up with a blockchain solution to show provenance of wine and fair trade coffee. I mean, we actually went to South America to talk to these companies that were creating this coffee because what would happen is the big companies would get all the coffee from these little farms, don't pay them a lot, you know how it goes. And so we actually pitched it. All of us were working in different companies, but we got to go through the process of going before venture capitalists and preparing, and to know that they left their families for nine weeks and a week was in and they hadn't done anything. It says a lot about what we had mentioned earlier, that you need role models, you need people, you need sponsors, you need help to be able to achieve things. And we talked about the woman working with the mainframe I wonder why IBM didn't scoop her up and give her a role. Why wasn't she brought in? And the other thing is we're like in 2019, and when you look at not just Silicon Valley companies, but right here in the park, you won't find a lot of executive people of color. And it's not because they're not talented. So at the place I worked, to, worked at before I, the place I am now, when I came in, it was so few black PhDs that I started a PhD fatality group through the HR team. And now I'm electrical and IBM, that company was creating hardware and things like that. So I had the, I was in that space, but we had people who were computer science, not one person of, one person of that team uh, became went in management. And today, no one is still at the company. They're all a different company. So that is to say, if they didn't see value in having six when there wasn't many in the nation and push those and pipeline them, then that says what's really important. And that was my second point. In conclusion, I wanted to say, I, this, is not just, this is not a woman's issue, right? Or a minority woman's issue in, in isolation. Like, yeah, we experience it and we go through it, but it will command a solution that's not just from these groups, it's from different groups coming together. And I propose, because we love science and we respect diverse perspectives, and because our society is really flat and it calls for it, that we have to make some kind of effort to alleviate the, the double bond dilemma.